Hello and welcome back. This is part three. Last week we talked about ways to save money in your business with AI. And today we're going to jump into the best areas to automate in your business. So welcome back, Elizabeth. Thank For you. those of you who are tuning in, this is Elizabeth Shields. She is the co-founder of Rock Paper Coin. And I just realized I don't think I ever introduced myself. So I'm Charmaine Branch, the marketing manager for NACE National. And let's continue with our fun series here. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I've really enjoyed these topics over the last couple of weeks, and this one is really near and dear to my heart. All right. Awesome. So my first question for you today is, what are the low-hanging fruit easy wins for areas of automation? I have to just say, automate your contracts and your invoices. Like, I think gone are the days of sending PDFs and expecting people to print and sign anything, even though, yes, you're still sending it electronically, it's taking a manual process for that potential client to sign it. So right off the bat, if you are not automating your contracts and invoices 100%, that's a very easy win for a business. A lot of software solutions, and whether that's Rock, Paper, Coin, there's HoneyBook, there's Dubsado, 17 Hats, there are so many options out there. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that I think rock, paper, coin is the best, but it's not going to be a good fit for everybody. So finding something that is a good fit for your business that you can rely on and that you know will send out those automated reminders. What's interesting around the automation piece is that DocuSign reported that businesses that use and send contracts digitally receive a 98% increase in close rates over those that do not. So if you are having trouble closing business, but you're sending out proposals and contracts, you might want to think, is this automated? And that's for two reasons. So the automation allows for somebody to sign very easily, click of a button on a phone or on their computer at work. Like it doesn't matter that we all know everyone's planning on the go or at work. And for the invoice piece, it allows them to pay on their phone or, you know, on their computer, which is great. But the more important piece and why it's not necessarily that exact moment that they're signing, which is great. It's also the reminders. So, you know, I can't exactly say what other software providers do as far as the reminders go, but I can tell you at Rock Paper Coin, we send out reminders one week before a due date, three days before the due date, and on the exact due date. Now, I can prove with exact data points that that matters. We have a 88% invoice paid rate by the due date. So 88% of our invoices that get sent out are paid by the due date. An additional 5% are paid within 24 hours of the due date. So that means that, you know, Essentially, when those automated reminders are going out, people are paying attention to them, hopping on and signing and paying. So I think it really does matter. And if you're thinking, I don't really need to automate this, I'll just follow up with them, you get busy and those, and those reminders can fall through the cracks and then you're out like a week or 10 days from when that payment was supposed to be paid. It's not worth your time when there's automation that makes it really easy to do it. So those are the two areas that, Honestly, people are expecting it to be automated. They don't expect for an invoice to come from the business in an email as an attachment. That looks outdated. That looks manual. Just let them know you're using a provider. You know, you're using this payment provider X and they can expect an invoice shortly. They're going to appreciate that on their end as well. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I, and I have a question because I'm curious. Um, so for specifically your database, um, when it comes to building like the contract or the invoice, do you build that inside the database or, or can you build it and you upload it and then you set everything oh, up? Yeah. So ah. you can, you can build it, you can upload it and then you can store it. And if you want to use that same contract as like a template over and over again, you can do that. And then you, you basically fill out that contract in rock, paper, coin for that exact customer's name. So you're not building it over and over again in word and then uploading it every time. Like we have a lot of great ways that again, are saving just more time on that automation side. Very, very nice. That's yeah. good to know. 
All right, my next question. Um, can you share any examples of areas and businesses where automation increased results, which you kind of yes, just dug into? I, know. Already. <laughs> I sprinkled in that in the last mm -hmm. one. So yeah, you know, it's great. DocuSign is reporting an increase in, in closed business. We are doing that as well on the contract and on the invoice side. And I think that just that note about that additional 5% within 24 hours is pretty eye-opening because we are sending it out as a reminder on the exact due date. So it's in people's inbox. They know that it's past due and they know that they need to take care of that. That really helps to increase the close rate for the business. So you're not following up on it. You just get that nice little email. It's like, great, you have a new client. Like they signed the contract or they paid the invoice. Um, so this is not just a rock, paper, coin thing. This is an automation thing. This is where all software businesses that provide a contract and invoice solution, they are reporting this, um, which I think is, is something we shouldn't ignore um, being in the wedding and event industry. Yeah, I always like to say as a marketer, the numbers never lie. So the proof is in the pudding right here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. And our, our last question for this segment, what challenges or concerns are there in regards to automation in your businesses? Yes. Um, I think this is a good question to, to touch on because auto, automation, it strips authenticity. Like it does. There, there's no way to go around it. It doesn't matter. Um, everybody knows when they get an automated email, whether it's like from your company embedded through a HoneyBook like solution, or whether it's coming from a third party like Square or, you know, whatever, PayPal or DocuSign. So I think it's really important like to think, how do we stay authentic in this digital age where so much of our business can be automated? And so I actually think maybe to focus a little bit more on like the areas that shouldn't be automated. And I am a past wedding planner as a wedding planner for 16 years prior to, to switching over to rock, paper, coin. And one of the areas oh, time and time again, that we always toyed around with was leads leads and inquiries. When you get a lead in and an inquiry in, should that be an automated response? And what we ended up deciding for our business, now this isn't right for everybody, was no. So we have never automated our leads or inquiries because that is really where we decided we wanted a personalized touch. We didn't want to strip out the authenticity or the voice of our brand. And we wanted them to know that we took the time to reply to it because we have the time to bring them on as a new client. I think that if you are a photo booth company, that it, do, it doesn't really like matter. They're hiring a, a product. Like, yes, you can be the face of the company and that's amazing, but it's more like, do you have this photo booth available? That can absolutely be automated. One of my favorite cake bakers, she automates it because she gets a lot of price shopping and she wants to show them information right off the bat to give them everything to still make sure that it's a good fit. So there's definitely areas that need to be automated, but Inquiries and leads are like nuggets of these, like little nuggets of gold. They are already interested in your business. They took the time to reach out. So why not take the time to reply? I, I'm not saying everything needs to be written from, you know, ground zero. I think that you can use canned responses and templates. And, you know, we, we have a template saved in Gmail and it's highlighted in red, the areas that I need to change. So instead of taking me seven or eight minutes to respond. It takes me two seconds to respond, but I'm not entering that into a sequence, an automated sequence. So I hear if people are worried about automation, I think that one of the areas that even if you don't want to automate your proposals or your contracts, that's fine. The one area that everybody expects to be automated is around invoicing. People are not remembering their due dates for their 15 vendors that they're hiring. So they're actually going to appreciate when that is automated and that those reminders are going out. So I think that's something that lead and inquiry management, I think is something that's just really interesting and, and is worth taking a pause and like taking a beat for a minute to understand what it is that you want to convey in that first message and whether you want that to be automated or not. Yeah. And, and like you've been saying in um, these series, by the time you've put all these in place, you'll have everything down to a, a T to where sending a response won't really take a lot of time. So yeah, exactly. Like you're automating almost like your process of it. So you're creating this template, you know, you're, you're saving it, you're noting what areas you want it to be like personalized. And 
honestly, Zapier is like this amazing tool that allows for us to automate more of the back end. So you can have a lead come in and you can send a Zapier to your CRM. You can send a Zapier to a document where it can scrape all that information and input it into a document for you that can then funnel into your email so that it can populate. Like there's a lot of powerful ways to still have an authentic voice, like right off the bat. So I think that's something just to make sure we're not losing sight of in a world that is heavily automated. Absolutely. So, so much amazing information. I've been learning so much each series (laughs) in each part. Yay. (laughs) Um, With that, I can't believe our time has come to an end for part three. Are there any takeaways you would like to give the audience watching? Yes, I think um, probably the biggest takeaway is look into an electronic contract signer and an electronic payment um, provider. I think those are just some easy, easy wins that are going to increase your close rate. It's going to save you time and money. You're not going to have to chase down payments that are outstanding or overdue. I think having that kind of like bookkeeping system is really going to help a lot of businesses. Well, thank you again, Elizabeth. And thank you everyone for tuning into our third part of this series. Next week will be the last and final part where we will jump into the best tech tools to support a team. See you next week.